In a previous video, we set up this side of the studio for live performances and we've recorded a bunch since then. But now we need to set up the other side of the studio for mixing, overdubs, and longer album projects. So that's what we're going to get into today. So if you haven't already, check out my first studio build video and then this other video that goes through the whole process of recording two live bands in one day. If you're new here, I am mostly known for live band recordings that I will do just about anywhere with whatever gear I have on hand. But I also created the most revolutionary drum plugin to come out in years, and I'm super passionate about creating first class albums track by track in addition to capturing the raw energy of full bands live in these down and dirty sessions. So all that said, I need a swanky little nest to hang with bands and craft these bangers in. This studio is a one room concept, so I needed a way to differentiate the performance area from the mixing and overdub area. I've been loving the look of slat walls that I've been seeing in a lot of studios lately, so I had the idea to define the mixing area with these slat wall corner traps. I wanted to match the dark wood aesthetic of the desk that I had found, so I found a dark stain that would look great on these slats. There wasn't enough room on my desk for speakers, so Pearl and Cowboy helped me put together these speaker stands. I had totally planned on getting new, bigger monitor speakers, but these $100 M audios just sounded so good and they were plenty loud. I also had this monoprice subwoofer lying around. It's pretty overpowered compared to the M audios, but they sound amazing together. I just turned the sub down a little. I definitely wasn't going to be able to produce the way I wanted to looking at a tiny laptop screen. So I mounted an old TV I had on the wall for some additional screen real estate. I had these acoustic panels in storage and they went pretty well with the decor so I put them over the couch. I got my beautiful tape machine back from the friend who had borrowed it while I was between studios and I tucked that in the corner of my desk for inspiration. I don't keep it just for indie cred however. So look forward to a future video where we use it to produce a track and we won't even turn on the computer for the day. One of the worst things about not having a permanent studio for so long was not having access to all my favorite tools. It was so empowering to fill my mic locker back up and have all my guitar pedals back at arm's reach. That said, you don't need any of this crap to make great music. It really just makes it more fun for me and it adds value for people who are coming and paying to work with me at the studio. The first band in to try out the new setup was Suburban Dads from New Hampshire. The first day was actually spent tracking basics live. We wanted to make this a super tight album quality production, so we recorded the guitars and bass direct so they would be isolated from the drums. In my old studio, we simply would have put the guitar amp speakers out in other rooms to isolate them. We don't have any place to do that here, so we just made do. Ultimately, what we were really going for were great drum tracks from that first day, so that's all we actually kept. The big plan was to do all the bass and guitar as overdubs so we could really dial in the tones and get their performances just right. Last session, we recorded bass guitar on these tracks and I was a little frustrated because we couldn't really hear what we were recording with the sound of the bass amp cranked in the room. So what I did was I ordered this reactive load box. You hook this up to the amp instead of a speaker. It creates a direct out and then you run an impulse response that simulates a speaker cab on the computer. That way you get the full like sound of tubes in the amp cranked all the way up, but you don't have to hear that cranked up in the room over what you're recording. You can really dial it in and hear exactly what you're recording on the computer. I'm really excited to try it out. I think it's gonna be perfect as we do guitars on this session today. I told you guys I ordered one of these yeah. used off Reverb and somehow it was sent to Colorado and waited, <laughs> waited there for two weeks. It finally made it to me a couple of days ago. It's like wrapped in one piece of bubble wrap. The one I got was smashed on all four corners and rattled inside. Oh. I, I'm like, dude, I'm not even gonna plug this into an, an amp. So I ordered this one from another used site and it came in, it was, it was packed adequately and it works. So we're gonna start out recording a DI off the actual guitar pedal board and the direct out from the load box. You can either choose to take a DI right out of the guitar or take the DI after the pedal board. And I just made the decision to take it directly out of the guitar because we're going to be 
capturing what's coming through the pedal board and the amp on the track that's coming out of the load box. So let's just get a completely stripped down DI guitar track separate in case we want to use completely different effects or, or create a, a different layer in there. We're probably not going to use it, but it took two seconds to set that up, so we might as well have it. So I'm just going to pull up the built-in Space Designer plugin. If you load up a cab impulse response and make it 100% wet, you achieve the exact same effect as a IR loader cab plugin. One of the great things about this is I'm not just using some generic IR pack that I got online somewhere. I'm using my own IR pack that I made at my old studio with all of the cabs that I have and would use on a session anyway. So we're doing a Fender Deluxe, so I'm going to open up my American Deluxe pack. SM57 Cap Edge Deluxe 1x12. That should be absolutely perfect. <laughs> Well, that's exciting just because it sounds great and we're not blowing our ears out with a amp speaker right in the room. What all do you have going for pedals here? You're, you've got both a, a RAT and a compressor and a graphic EQ. Let's just use like a little bit of RAT and, and the tube distortion out of the amp because one of the great things about this load box is that you can crank the amp all the way up mm -hmm. and really get the effect of the tubes in the amp. And you are using both positions. Mm -hmm. Try your bridge position with, yeah, with, with the tone. <laughs> My bad, I'd never change that shit. <laughs> with the tone and volume all the way up. But I kind of like to hear it with the music. So let's do a take. Don't worry about tuning up or anything. The thing about the rat pedal is the distortion gets way too distorted really fast. So to get that that just a little bit of drive and shimmer and stuff, you're actually you just find this range, you listen to it as it's playing back, and it's just a tad of just like way down, like 5% or whatever on the distortion. All right, so that was a really great take. Just one thing to keep in mind, you don't need to clamp your left hand on the strings super duper hard. As you're clamping it harder, you could be bending those strings out of tune. At the same time, I actually don't, I don't think your right hand needs to be quite, needs to hit quite as hard either. <laughs> Why don't you just try one that's a little lighter? Now the cool thing about this buildup is you can start out really light like that, and if you're not starting out full blast, then you have somewhere to build up to. While we're talking dynamics, I think that last part, let's call it the chorus that you left off on, -na 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 yeah. that part, I think you'd hit that a little bit harder. Because yeah. like then, when you get to that, you want that you want that to be kind of your max. I mean, not your actual max, <laughs> but as loud as you would go in the song. We, we want like a little bit more power there. So we switch to this uh, heavier palm muted sound, so we got a little kind of Got a tone going for that. Is glycerine? Yeah, that's <laughs> literally. <laughs> So I try not to get too picky about this, but sometimes it's like it's like the first note or the first strum of a song, or there's a guitar intro that's naked. It's like it's got to be just right. So we do we do enough takes until we can get it. Sometimes you get too stuck on that part and the takes just get worse and worse. You have to move on to something else and come back to it. But I think uh, Jordan did great. We definitely got what we needed, so we're good. I'm gonna move on to the next thing. We have a clean pick part. It might seem counterintuitive, but we need more drive and more gain on there to get it to really cut through the way we want in the mix. So there's gonna be a little bit of edge to it. It might sound like a little dirty by itself, but it's gonna cut through just right with the rest of the instruments and sound clean in the mix. Okay, so it's still really pretty, but it doesn't sound, you don't hear that drive when all the, 
in the in the mix of all the other instruments. You just hear the kind of clarity of it. All right, so we got the take on that clean part and it appears, looks like four more times in the arrangement. So it's just as, as easy as this, because we're, we're all on a grid. <laughs> Made two copies there, now make two more and we should be good. There's really no drawbacks to doing that. We can move on to the next thing. It is about two hours into the session, so I think we're making really good time. So we're gonna switch over and do the next guitarist. I think I wanna be true to kind of what you usually do with a bit of chorus, so let's grab a chorus pedal and we'll get that in the mix too. So the cool thing with these line six pedals is to do the tap tap, you just press the pedal halfway and then you press it all the way to turn it on and off. Okay. So in adding an effect like that, we really got to hear it in the mix because you could totally not perceive the yeah. effect coming through. You might need to use more than you think. Kill someone with that thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's hefty. The weird thing about them is it was made as a platform where you can unscrew this part of it and you can pop in a different. It's like a transformer. Exactly. Damn. Yeah. That's the, cool though. The Echo Park. This one is really tasty because you can, you, as you can tell, it's green like the famous Line 6 mm -hmm. DL4 pedal, but this is like an all time classic. People love this thing and I found that this one. It's like sounds even better. It's like got even more mojo to like the the tape style delay and stuff. I can't make this one sound as crazy as this one sounds. It's like when those fake tape delays start mm -hmm. like replicating and replicating uh -huh. and getting more and more distorted and wacky. This one just just gets crazier. I find. That's awesome. That was just my experience back when I effed with pedals a lot. These days, I'm just not as picky. I think it's more about the music you're making and how the the people song. you're making with. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess we gotta figure out where we're gonna do the vocals. Yeah, we haven't really done a like an isolated vocal track in the studio yet. They've all been these like live sessions. Eventually I'll give you like, give a vocalist an area that's, I don't know, a little more intimate or private <laughs> for them, but I think essentially we're just gonna, it's gonna have you stand here. Give me and, more, uh, I'll make it work. I almost didn't find this, uh, what do you call this thing, shock mount? Yeah. For the good mic? So I was going to just grab one of those mics off the drums and uh, that would have been just fine. I think you actually get a little closer to the mic. Like that's your main thing and then you can like, maybe <coughs> That much, yeah. I want you to get into this and sell it. You're gonna be able to sell it because you wrote these words and they're from personal experience. And I want you to kind of tune out the rest of the world and just put yourself into the place you were when you wrote these lyrics, the situations that these lyrics are about. Just make us cry, you know? <laughs> if we're gonna go that route, could I start with wet thumb then? Absolutely. It's a lot easier for me to get there with that. Yeah. <laughs> Not thinking about Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this and maybe thought it was just a little bit different than your average gear obsessed audio YouTube channel, it would mean so much to me if you wanted to hit that like button and would consider subscribing to see what we do next. Until then, take care.